might take a couple for So I sent Jen a video and she's like, it looks like it. If you're pressing on the perineum to support a bowel movement that sometimes signifies prolapse, it's actually sometimes what we teach people to compensate um, to provide that upward support as they're um, you know, doing some gentle bearing down with good breath technique um, and with a stool. But um, if you're talking about inserting and splinting the um, rectum that is a rectocele, which is not rectal prolapse, it is the form of it. Rectal prolapse is when it actually comes in on itself. A rectocele is when the rectum comes forward in the vagina and therefore it needs some help being pushed back into a straight line for an easier bowel movement. Breathing is very important and very underrated highly underrated um, but if you're doing the breathing and that doesn't just mean like maybe you're doing five minutes of deep diaphragm breathing that's different than are you diaphragm breathing all day are you not ab gripping are you not butt clenching are you not clutching your jaw um, are you able to inhale lengthen exhale contract inhale go back to lengthen how are your bladder and bowel habits are you straining to push out pee or poop are you hovering over the toilet um, are your hips strong? Are they weak? Are your hips tight? Are your inner thighs tight? Uh, there's like oodles of things to consider um, on top of how we add the breathing into those things. I would practice on my back breathing. Uh, maybe I'll make a post on this of how you can progress that. But you would breathe, you would create your core contraction, and then you're just lying there with your knees bent, and then you're going to try to breathe and then contract, breathe and contract in small uh, volume. So you're practicing core stability and then you'll progress that core stability into different exercises, kneeling on your hands and knees. Today's post, the pay loft press is a really excellent one to practice a neutral spine with a brace core in and many, many more. I will share two old reels that covers this. The key to training your lower core is these three tips. This is best done lying on your back first. Find your bony hip points and move your fingertips inward over the muscles of the lower core. Use one of these verbal cues to create a visual within your body. The pelvic floor is going to have its own like active and resting components. Like when you're standing, it's it's active, okay, to a certain extent. The point is to not be like actively like lifting and holding it up. Um, that's not necessary during standing and certain activities. So the resting activity really should go with your breath. And so if you are breathing into your diaphragm all day, it will naturally descend and it will lift when you exhale, um, just at a gentle, like its own natural recoil um, that you shouldn't have to think about as long as you tap into how to do it. Um, and then when you're doing certain activities, you're going to want to be aware of how it's coordinating during those activities with it. Okay, let me try to get into my normal... Okay, that's a relaxed belly. This is if I was all the way in, socked in. And this is if I'm middle of the row. So when I find myself out gripping, I'm like a little bit like that. Otherwise, you should be completely relaxed. I thought about it. I did it for a little bit when I was still at the clinic. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of limitations to it as well. Like if I want to like spend the, like if it was consulting and talking, it'd be like, one part, but if I'm going to try to say, like, I'm going to treat you, like, I feel like there's so many limitations with that, uh, where I love one-on-one, -on -one, like, hands-on stuff, showing people things, and, like, that can be super helpful, so I don't know. I would probably do, like, consulting-based stuff, 
we are, would feel like I'd have to like give you these like exercise handouts and like all of the stuff. So I feel like there's a lot that goes into, I, I guess in my head, what I, what I would do for virtual, I feel like there's a lot that goes into it to do it well. And uh, I don't know if I have the capability for that <laughs> right now, for sure. So if you're going to like rehab specifically, they would probably have you doing something So if you're going to like rehab specifically, they would probably have you doing something every single day. Um, if you're talking about like once I've, you reach your goals, my thought is just that like you're always in maintenance mode for something because if we're not, you know, exercising to maintain, then we're going to, you know, slide backwards. But also in a sense to kind of get out of the like mindset that of like pelvic floor specific.